two months into the Wuhan coronavirus epidemic. If you look at the Chinese media on the CCTV, you will still see maybe 99% of the reports regarding about the uh, Wuhan outbreak is emphasizing how much uh, efforts the government already do it. The medical authorities limited the testing kit that the hospitals can use. So my uh, appeal to the United States government and CDC is to don't use the Chinese official data as your only source to know about the true situation of this outbreak. Entire China is in self-quarantine. I mean, what other problems would emerge from this long shutting down of cities and provinces and basically the whole country? Mm. I think this will change in a very fundamental way about how Chinese people uh, live their life for the next few months. And reports emerged that the Chinese Communist Party has prepared for the worst. What do they mean by that? No, they only have the resources to, to protect those 11 cities and they don't have the resources to protect the rest? Or they don't care, they just only care about the 11 cities? What do they mean? Will the Wuhan coronavirus outbreak stay at the level of SARS, MERS and Ebola? Or is it going to be much worse? How are the Chinese people coping with the crisis? And what's the communist leadership's bottom line if the epidemic grows out of control? My interview was Dr. Lin Xiaoxu, a Chinese and American trained microbiologist. He was lab director of viral disease branch of the Water Raid Army Institute of Research, who was involved in the outbreak response for MERS in the Middle East in 2014. I'm Simone Gao, and you are watching Zooming In. Thank you very much, Dr. Lin, for being with us today on Zooming In. Thank you very much. Uh, it's my pleasure to be with you. Okay. A Lancet article suggested that the market is not the only source of the virus, and it might not be the origin of the virus either. Uh, the science magazine went along with that conclusion and said um, the origin of the virus has not been found. What does that say to the development of the vaccine, and what does that mean to the containment of the epidemic? Yeah, so this become a completely different story uh, from what the government originally said. Because you, if you read a, a public health alert from a, a public health commission or a health commission in Wuhan uh, cities, so on December 31st and January, January 3rd and January 5th, right, they released initial public health alert. They always mention this is related to Huanan seafood market. They said it's related, but I think one article even said the seafood market is the cause of the epidemic. Yeah, is that so, right? Yeah, because if you only release very brief information from media, you know, interpreting these stories, quite often they will simplify. They will say this is related to the seafood market. But I think the uh, public health officers in Wuhan probably know the situation is a lot more complicated than just one seafood market. You think they're misleading. They just simplify the situation, give people the impression that this comes from the seafood market. Yeah, it could be like that, and it could be they simplify their assumption. You know, they think, oh, most of the case related to a uh, seafood market. But I think uh, the problem is in China, the, the official uh, data that being released in early January was so limited. And in those pub early public health alert, you didn't mention any patient's uh, demographic, like you didn't know any patient's age, their sex and their occupation, no information like that. Mm -hmm. So from public health aspect, this is like a, a, so much a, a dark side that you don't know. Mm -hmm. exactly. and, and, yeah, black hole, and you already got this information, just the government didn't want to release it, right? All the hospital know, right? even simple, right? Among these uh, 41 patients, how many people are male? Mm -hmm. And their age range, these are simple information you can release to public, even on cause panic, right? Mm -hmm. but, but the government even didn't release this information in the early alert. That's why people don't know enough. And even for scientists overseas, they try to understand this outbreak. It may be a small cluster outbreak, right? But it may be a serious one. Mm -hmm. so, but even for outside, it's so hard to understand what's going on in Wuhan. Right, tell me why identifying the origin of the virus is 
essential. Yeah, because uh, when you know where is original uh, of the virus, then you may know, for example, certain animals actually bringing the virus to human, right? If it's a zoonotic uh, infection, then people know how to handle it much better. For example, you, you know when if it's a swine fever, right? So you know maybe the pig is the one that transmitted the virus to human. Then of course you, you see the government can take measures to close down this uh, slaughterhouse for the for the pigs and the, or pig farms close it down, right? Mm -hmm. So you know where it, it comes from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you, if it's a rat, you know. How, how to eradicate red. If it's a mosquito transmitted the disease, you know you need to do more environmental cleaning and get rid of the mosquitoes source, right? Mm -hmm. If, for example, if this virus originated from a bat mm -hmm. and then jump into like uh, a cat or chicken or something, mm -hmm. but now people understand, uh, all get the symptoms, uh, uh, they detect the virus from the chicken instead of the bat, and they think that's the origin. That could cause problems, right? Yes. They, they would uh, limit the chicken, but not the bat. Yeah, so in this uh, scenario, right, the bat could be the original source, and then the chicken or other poultry is an uh, intermediate host, right? So if you know the original one, you know maybe uh, those um, people who sat in the chicken, they maybe visit some other like bat cave or, or in certain region have a lot of bat caves and they got infected and because the bat virus need a certain chunks to transmit into these other animals, right? And adapt it for a certain while before they can transmit to human. Mm -hmm. So if you know the, the, the transfection, uh, the, if you know the transmission route, then you are easy to check down what will be the root source. Right, mm -hmm. but, but if you only know uh, only one seafood market and they sell, they're selling so many different animals there, how do you know which one causing the problem? Right, right. And if the cave is very far away from Wuhan, then maybe it can cause another cluster outbreak in other cities too. That's mm -hmm. why it becomes even harder to contain the right. problem. So it's not being able to identify the origin of the virus a big hurdle to, for developing vaccines? It may not be a big hurdle right now because with uh, the recent advancement in uh, uh, vaccine industries, uh, also in the uh, virology and immunology. So now as long as you've got the virus sequence, you, if you've got the uh, virus culture, you've got the virus stock, uh, you can use different ways to develop vaccines. So um, you can do the kill the vaccines, you know, and if you know the sequence, you can do certain subunit uh, vaccines. For example, the virus uh, glycoprotein on the surface, the spike protein, you can use a uh, subunit and then to stimulate uh, immune response in the people's body. So it may not be a whole virus vaccine, you can be a small subunit vaccine. Mm -hmm. You can try these different ways. And so that's why the vaccine industry nowadays has more tools in their hands uh, to develop vaccine. So even if you don't know where the virus comes from, you can probably develop certain vaccine that, that can be in some way effective in control of the situation. Right because an article from the Institute of uh, Virology indicates that a Wuhan virus lab, MS4 lab, the highest security level lab in Wuhan, they study viruses like the one that's found in the epidemic, almost identical ones. Mm -hmm. So if they already know the virus, they have been studying the virus, virus why have they not been able to develop a vaccine in time? So the study of the virus, the coronavirus, has many aspects, right? So you can study mm -hmm. virus pathogenicity, you can study its origin, you can study its uh, vaccine development, right? So in, uh, in the Institute of Virology, which is definitely one of the top uh, uh, virology institute in China, or you can say even in the whole molecular biology field, they are one of the top institutes in China. So that's why in 2017, they did identify uh, the bad coronavirus and they collected in one of the caves in Yunnan. Oh, uh, so they said they collected the virus from Yunnan, in, uh, in, not in from the, the seafood market in Wuhan. Yeah, that's not related to Wuhan at the time, right? So it was related uh, to Yunnan. And they actually found the virus can went through so many uh, cycles of recombination and can generate a really SARS-like coronavirus. Mm -hmm. But anyway, SARS coronavirus is in the genetic pool of the bat coronavirus. Uh, so when they found out this 
uh, situations. They actually say we help uh, the civet uh, to clear its name because originally people blame civet is the one is the animal that causing the SARS up. Yeah, yeah. The civet is the one that caused the SARS outbreak. So now they said actually they trace it back to the bat. Mm. Uh, so when they got this uh, bad coronavirus or you got a recombination of uh, a new uh, bad coronavirus right through your uh, experiments, you got this in your hand, of course you have a very powerful tool that you can further develop a vaccine against it. Right. Uh, but I, s I don't know uh, like how much effort they already done with the vaccine development. I believe they will be trying it because even uh, in 2004, right after the SARS outbreak, Chinese scientists started to develop vac vaccine mm. for the virus. But, I, but overall, vaccine development is always a challenge. It is, uh, even though uh, there are quite often people uh, saying we, we found potential uh, vaccine candidates, but not too many vaccine trials were successful mm -hmm. uh, passing uh, phase one, phase two. So you can, ha you can develop different ones, especially the subunit uh, vaccines and uh, different tools. Uh, you can develop it, you can try it on animal test, and then you can, but when you go to human level, phase one, phase two, it's quite difficult. Now for example, um, in 2014, when the Ebola outbreak uh, in Africa, right, so uh, very soon, in three months, the scientists in the world develop a uh, vaccine against Ebola you say virus. So three months is quick? Yeah, three months is quick, okay. very quick already. So but it was still too late for the Ebola outbreak? It's kind of late, and the problem is that it, it was only partially effective. And then uh, when people using this vaccine again uh, in the 2018 uh, Ebola outbreak in Congo, uh, their local uh, public health officer actually, actually later on claimed this is not effective. Hmm, because yeah. the virus have mutated. Could be mutated and you know, and could be at a time when you first try in such an emergency response, it was very limited to try. You only have few patients can, can experience this or can take this vaccine, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's a lot of question regarding about the scale of the uh, trial. Right. So give us an assessment of the current stage of uh, vaccine development for this uh, new virus. I think it's at the very uh, beginning age for this uh, vaccine development. But one good thing is that you, you know the full genome sequence already, and some of the lab already got the virus collected from the patient samples. So you definitely have ways to, to design different vaccines. That's why so many scientists globally actually kind of racing to develop different type of vaccines. So how long is it going to take for them to, to, to make this thing? Uh, so it will take several months. Um, especially it has to go through uh, animal tests and then uh, and phase, uh, phase one trials before they can actually use on humans. Uh -huh. unless, Is that going to be too late? We don't know. We don't know how long this epidemic may last. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this vaccine is uh, one tool that people feel that a uh, universal vaccine can be a, like a fundamental way to, to prevent the disease further spread. But that's also related to another uh, serious issue actually, is about the immune response uh, that people can generate against different type of vaccine. And for people who are doing vaccine development for a long time, they're always facing an issue in the modern age because mm -hmm. people, so many people, their health condition is not ideal. Mm. All right, so even the same vaccine you put on the people now, they may not generate strong enough vaccine. Or the or the or the virus or the or the antibody titer generated from this uh, vaccine may not be so sustainable, may not last for a long time. Mm. So you can develop different drugs, but people change. People's immune system become weaker than before. Mm. Especially so many younger generation people, they are you know uh, sleep late. They have all kinds of c computer games, and huh. they are don't engage too much uh, exercise. So their overall physical condition is weaker. Okay. Yeah. Even in the military, That's you can see the young Something recruits. Their physical condition is weaker than previous generations. So your immune system in the whole society is overall weaker. Mm -hmm. So the same the vaccine gave to people, you stimulate less immune response. Mm -hmm. So the key issue is for people to defend themselves is still build up your own immune strength. This is still fundamental. The vaccine is only uh, help to stimulate it, right? 
Right. If you're weaker, I cannot stimulate you to be stronger. Okay. Yeah. I think a more pressing uh, issue mm. is antibiotics for this uh, virus, the real cure for this virus. It's antivirus drugs. Antivirus yeah. drugs. Yes. Right. How is that going? So antiviral drugs uh, may have some potential candidates because uh, uh, we don't have specific anti these novel coronavirus drugs. Definitely, mm. we, it will take even longer time. But than the vaccine. And uh, it will take longer time than the vaccine. So uh, we shouldn't put hopes on a cure for now. Cure is always difficult. Uh, it's, it's basically, you try to contain the situation, you try to uh, slow down the, uh, like for the, for example, the inflammatory response that stimulate by this novel coronavirus. It may, because uh, the virus may cause uh, uh, overproduction of cytokines, can, can uh, lead to more severe uh, inflammatory uh, response in their lungs. It can be systematic uh, inflammatory response in the human bodies. And so basically a lot of treatments try to uh, slow down. Sim- yeah. Slow down the symptoms. Slow down the symptoms. Slow down the virus replication. Uh, reduce uh, the scale of the you know uh, overproduction of your cytokines, things like that. So mm-hmm. uh, there are uh, different drugs used for previous uh, uh, viral explosions uh, or other uh, outbreaks. You may use it for for this uh, novel coronavirus. So are you saying there's no cure? <laughs> I don't think it has a cure. Even SARS for 17 years, nobody said I can cure SARS. Hmm. Right? Nobody said cure SARS. Even AIDS, nobody said I cure AIDS. I only can help people live with AIDS for a longer time. I see. And you can live with AIDS, you can live with HIV infection without symptoms. Right. Let's talk about the um, Wuhan situation mm-hmm. right now. You mm-hmm. know, half China is shutting down. Mm-hmm. And Wuhan, 8 million people, uh, 11 million people, mm-hmm. I mean, considering a lot of them already left, gone, uh, yeah, yeah. left <laughs> Wuhan. So, say 8 million people are quarantined. Um, we have seen reports from social media um, that, um, you know, there's still a big difficulty in, you know, the patients getting, the confirmed the patients getting tri- treatment from the hospitals mm. uh, because there's a line, there's a long line. They have to wait for days mm-hmm. to, 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 to be called. And it's even difficult, more difficult for those who develop the symptoms. Mm. They can't even go to the hospica- uh, hospital because they don't have a car. So how do you assess the situation in Wuhan and how do you think it will evolve? So I think overall, uh, I think the Chinese governments need to treat these uh, outbreak uh, more serious than what it is right now. Uh, mm-hmm. To me, this is like a tsunami coming. Uh, so if you think the 2003 SARS outbreak is like a big wave, big tide, and this time I think it's a tsunami. What do you mean they need to be se- more serious? Uh, seems to me, I mean, from the media report, from the official media report, they are all in. They have done what they can. They have sent like a hundreds of doctors to Wuhan city, they're building new hospitals and they're opening up hospitals and stuff. Why do you say they're not serious enough? I think this is one, um, so one aspect I talk about seriousness is to fully appreciate the, the potential risk that mm. this outbreak could be. So it could be spread more globally and could be a real pandemic situation. And the Chinese government still need to be more transparent in releasing more information. So for example, uh, the animal testing results and for, uh, for, diff- for this virus, right, uh, for its infecting different animal tests. I know many of the institute probably already been doing that. We don't have this, this information because that's also very important for global uh, scientists to find a way to, to stop this uh, transmission. And also a uh, very important Chinese government need to let the, uh, so many hospitals in China that are dealing with this patient to have the authority to release information to the public, like how many patients are be, being hospitalized in your local hospitals, how many people have severe symptoms, and how many people die. And this number need to come from the hospital directly. And also, a local hospital need to play more important role to let the public know uh, any effective treatment so far, and how many people are still uh, maybe infected but in the community without treatment. Are they in self-quarantine situation? So the local authority need to have more rights to release information to the public. So the whole world, not only Chinese people, the whole world will know the true scale 
of this outbreak that already happening in China. The reason that I say the Chinese government has not really, really serious on it because they, they do a lot of big scale uh, uh, government tactics, right? So you can lock down a whole city, but just as you mentioned, five million people already left Wuhan. So how about these five million people? China's always claim they have uh, big data, now a, a surveillance <laughs> state, right? How about these five million people? Are you tracking down them? Right at the same time, <laughs> so uh, they on, on, if you look at the Chinese media on the CCTV, you will still see maybe ninety nine percent of the reports regarding about the uh, Wuhan outbreak is emphasizing how much uh, efforts party. the government already do it, right? And how much exactly. uh, efforts the party already do it. Very very little you see the real problem that come from the community. You didn't see CCTV interviewing people being self-quarantined or, or, or people uh, went to hospital, cannot find any treatment, was forced to left home. So there's very little negative report. When they mention anything negative, it's try to use it as a backdrop, saying the government doing so good to overcome the problem. The so government you, is working so hard. Yeah, they're working so hard. They always bring so many different medical troops from different cities to support Wuhan, right? Different medical supply arrive. The big corporation donate money, mm -hmm. and, right? So people organize to help them. So you'll find so many positive Repulse. Right. That's why you feel uh, if situation may be contained. Yeah, they're all in. Like if the government is really uh, on top of this, yes. uh, we can trust the situation will be under control very quickly. I think that's the menta that's mentality the, that's of a lot of most of the Chinese people. Yeah, especially when you're watching CCTV all day long, because when you are self quarantine at home, you probably watch this news all the time, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you you feel oh, probably these things will pass in two weeks. Yes. But the real situation is always only in the government hand. The public still don't know. That's why I said the government still haven't treated this very, very seriously. I see. In a transparent way. Right. So what's your assessment of the situation in Wuhan? I think the situation definitely is much worse than what the government tell the world right now. And we see the uh, estimate uh, from uh, scientists from the UK, from Hong Kong. They've all predicted the number of infections are about a hundred thousand in Wuhan alone, right? So uh, with so many people got infected, with very limited medical resource still available, uh, it's very hard to contain the uh, spreading, the transmission of this virus, even just in Wuhan city. Mm -hmm. Even though government tried to uh, basically shut down all the transportation, the no traffic flow in the cities, but it's mm -hmm. still very hard to contain it. And the government's it's very good at showing people they, they do very uh, draconic measures, right? They build up the two hospitals with thousand beds. But at the same time, you're wondering, before the bed is built, how about tens of thousands of people? What have they done before? Yeah, and it's, if you think about different potential tools that you can use in the city, right? In, in Wuhan, how many apartment buildings that are empty? Right in China, you know there are so many. They can just uh, simply move those patients to yeah. those empty apartments. Empty apartments, right? And even whole building, they are empty. There are many of the projects they are kind of stopped in the middle, right? So you can quickly finish something. Fill these people in the ghost Fill people house. in 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 these empty apartments, and even you can use some of the big hotels, right? You can contain people in there. You don't have to build a whole new one. You can quickly do modification in the ventilation system in the hotel, mm -hmm. in the apartment building to make it uh, shoot better for quarantines, right? But at least you can put thousands of people in this apartment building, this hotel, and then you can easily start to treat them, or at least isolate them in a better situation, maybe even one room per person. That's even better than a hospital environment. Because mm -hmm. in this kind of outbreak, hospitals is always one of the most dangerous places Right. to cause additional transmission. Do you think things will get a lot worse in Wuhan in the coming days, weeks? I, I think you still see another uh, major rise of the uh, infected case mm -hmm. yeah, in Wuhan and throughout China to more province will have uh, more cases being uh, reported. And especially now, in the government at least uh, produce more of the uh, diagnostic kits and supply to different regions. So that many of the places start to able to testing uh, this uh, new coronavirus. So you will see more cases being reported. But at the same time, I also question about these government's uh, management tools, uh, management ways. Because once the, uh, the diagnostic measures 
being identified by the WHO, by the Chinese scientists, right? Every hospital in China, as long as you have the capacities, you can order these uh, primers to order these kits, testing kits through commercial source. You can even use a foreign uh, pharmaceutical companies' products to to support it. You should open up, uh, let people order it, uh, you know, through different ways instead of waiting the central government to, to do it. I, I assume you must have seen that report. Uh, I think it's from the Epic Times. Mm -hmm. And they reported the, the uh, medical authorities limited the testing kit that the hospitals can use. By, by doing that, they can limit, you know, the essentially how many. Uh, number of yes, yeah. I mean. That's why on, on from, from uh, uh, like United States, right, from overseas perspective, you always hard to tell the true situation in China if you only read the official data. So my uh, appeal is to the to the United States government and CDC is to don't use the Chinese official data as your only source to know about the true situation of this outbreak. Definitely try to work, work with uh, independent media that get more uh, information through Chinese uh, social networks. And you know, even a lot of hospitals, uh, maybe uh, doctors, nurses, they will actually tell you the situations through their own selfie uh, videos. You just said uh, do not use the government, official government source as uh, their only source. I yeah. would say probably not use them at all because <laughs> probably serves the opposite. Yeah. If you listen to them, they gave you probably the very misleading information. Yeah, it could be very misleading. And that's why you, you, you have to uh, decipher the message behind the government's, <laughs> the the government's message, not right? So they're not used to do it. It's so hard, right. right? So while the government gave the people the very positive image, we may be able to control the situation. But at the same time, you, you see, a uh, message about the Wuhan's municipal city actually requests the central government to allow them to extend the holiday uh, time to February 14. So this is even longer than the two weeks uh, period, right? Because mm -hmm. if you think about the coronavirus may have an incubation period for two weeks. So assume you close on the city on uh, January 23rd, right? So suppose by February 8th, you, mo most people maybe get infected. If you don't have disease, you probably already passed the most critical time, right? But now the government actually want to extend it. What does that mean, what right? What does that mean? <laughs> right. So that's why I said the true situation is always a lot more serious than the government presented to the world. So explain that to me. That means a lot more people are infected than they reported? Definitely. I uh, believe that 100%. There are a lot more people infected than the government reported. So the true situation is always a lot more serious than uh, what the government presented to the world, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of whether it's uh, the number of uh, severe patients or the death number, death number. yeah, and also uh, suspected cases uh, in the United States, we call it PUI, patient under investigation. So mm -hmm. all these numbers, if you time, times 10 times uh, on official data, maybe more close to the reality. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So you just talked about the government is going to extend the spring festival holiday to February 14th. and. Uh, and now basically China is shut down. How would, I mean, what other problems would emerge from this long shutting down of cities and provinces and basically the whole country? Mm. I think this will change in a very fundamental way about how Chinese peoples uh, live their life for the next few months. Uh, because uh, if you just shut down for a few days, people can survive easily, right? Mm -hmm. So, but if you last it for three weeks, four weeks, then you see a lot of problems surfing up. And of course, you can see the government try to mobilize different ways to supply uh, food, vegetables, all kinds of essentials uh, to the mm -hmm. cities. But that's, Have but they been effective in that, efficient and effective? In Do certain ways, it definitely is effective because the government mobilized so many resources to support a city. Right, so. But I heard stories from mm. Wuhan that people, sick people, don't get to go to the hospital, and people who have symptoms can't have to wait in days. They don't, they don't get picked up from the taxi or whatever the community cars they are supposed to be able to use. Yeah, that's why uh, it's, people cannot rely simply on the government's uh, 
uh, supply, a government official way to support yourself. So I think it's very important for people living in Wuhan or other cities that are being uh, quarantined down. Mm -hmm. uh, they need to find a way to self-organize to support themselves and collaborate with the uh, hospital directly, you know, medical staffs directly. If you have people, you know, sick at home, if they're showing severe symptoms, don't just bring them to the hospital by yourself. You know, connect, uh, contact the hospital, see if the hospital have any additional manpower to come to pick up the patients. Mm -hmm. So it seems like this. So people need to find a way to support themselves. And the governments try to find different ways to support the city, but the government can always say, well, this, is, this place is more important, I want to sacrifice other cities. You know, so for example, the government can say, Wuhan is so important. I can maneuver all resources to support Wuhan. But how about other cities, other certain cities in, in Hubei province that also need a lot of resources, right? Uh, by the way, did you see that report that um, says uh, the central government is, has identified 11 cities that they, they want to safeguard? They, you know, yeah, how about other places, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. W w what do they mean by that? They, can, yeah. they only have the resources to to protect those 11 cities and they don't have the resources to protect the rest or they don't care, they just only care about the 11 cities? What do they mean? So I think at first it means these cities that they identify are facing a very dire situation. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have to support them. Uh, so, you know, in, in China, these cities, they are not small and many of them, you know, maybe even mid-sized cities, millions of people in there. Not a mega city like Wuhan, but they still have million people, right? So government have to identify some of the cities they work. They can at least quickly mobilize the resource to support these cities. Yeah, but at the same time, they are basically saying for the countryside, for other smaller cities, we we won't be able to take care of you if you have an outbreak right now. So better prepare yourself. Mm -hmm. So basically, you can interpret in these two different ways. The, these are the very uh, important, like epic centers for this outbreak. Because I think right now maybe others, uh, smaller city, also have uh, like large number of cases, uh, but just the government didn't release it yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the true situation is, is probably more than Wuhan uh, is the epic center. Now it's maybe other cities already have more uh, like important, uh, may have significant number of cases. Right. Especially right. in Hubei province, because you imagine in Wuhan how many people you know, travel to nearby cities or farm sites, countryside, right? So actually the whole Hubei province is in big trouble. Right. Uh, Let's imagine that scenario a little bit. If the Chinese central government is only able to take care of 11 cities or whatever, and all the rest of the country is left alone, and if the epidemic really broke out, at that stage, don't you think the Chinese people are going to be very upset with the government? What would happen then? Uh, the Chinese people definitely are upset about, with the government. I think a lot of Chinese people don't have other alternative way to, to put their hope on, right? Because Chinese government controls society in such sorrow ways. Uh, so almost every aspect of their life, you need government's monitoring support, all these kind of you know, control measures. So the government shut, close down the city, shut down the city. So you feel like your only chance is wait for the government to support you. That's why it's very, very difficult. But right now, uh, Chinese government still try to make this maybe major cities uh, that has a lot of infection cases as a like a, like a model case right one they want to show the world they can contain the situation right. but other cities even like big city like Shanghai there are news saying that Shanghai is probably the second uh, largest city in, in this list of uh, potential infections right. uh, so what about Shanghai Right, so such big another city with more than ten million people. Mm -hmm. So how how does Shanghai do to protect themselves? Mm -hmm. So of course uh, the big city have different way to mobilize uh, neighboring province or city to support themselves. Uh, but overall, it just become very difficult for if the the overall it just become very difficult for Chinese people to uh, to go through this. You can call it calamity. <laughs> So what's your assessment of the Chinese Communist Party's ability to handle such a large-scale public health crisis? So I think we can 
uh, address this issue from different uh, angles. So first, what's their purpose? Uh, right? For the Chinese government, their fundamental purpose is to maintain their own power. So handling public crisis is very important for them in terms of how they can maintain their own power in China. Mm -hmm. So they can do all kinds of ways to, uh, to show the people they can uh, try to contain the situation, contain the outbreak. But the fundamental purpose is to keep the Chinese government in power. So they will portray all the very positive image and then try to keep all the challenge, the difficulty, the disaster aspect into the dark. Mm -hmm. And so to Chinese people, you will continue to see the media reporting so many positive uh, uh, signals, right? So, so many government uh, measures to, to support the community, uh, support the hospital, military engaged, support the hospital. I, uh, I just want to mention one news report I saw. It's actually a video clip. Mm. Uh, you know, the Vice Premier Li Keqiang, Li Keqiang is the Premier. Mm. So Premier Li Keqiang went to Hubei and asked a bunch of bureaucrats, you know, high-level uh, high officials from Hubei province, mm -hmm. um, do you have any difficulties? Mm -hmm. Do you have anything that we need to help you with? All the officials are like, no, we don't. <laughs> This is, is that a, the typical Chinese Communist Party mentality? Yes, especially when you saw it on the news because it's their official tomb. They, they, they want to show people the, the Chinese Communist Party is always so glorious. They are so good at serving people. You know, they can We're overcome all the difficulty. Yeah. So their propaganda tomb is that the, this is a disease. The Communist Party can lead the Chinese people to overcome. We can overcome. conquer. Yeah, we can conquer. You know, under the Communist Party leadership. So that's a problem. We said that uh, their purpose is not really uh, uh, help people overcome the, the, the challenge the disease brought. Their purpose is to okay, I can use this chance to maintain my power. Right. So I think the fundamental problem on this one, and then practically from that. I think this, if this happens in America, I think all the officials will say, you know, I have this problem, I have that difficulty, why don't you help me? The federal government should do this, do that. But in China, that's not the case. Yeah. Uh, not even one official said anything. All of them said, yes, we got this under control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, it, that's why sometimes you wear red news from China, you feel very sad. You just feel the Chinese people, many people are very hopeless. But these people's voice, you can never be heard. The government do not allow them to be interviewed by the media. And even, uh, you know, for example, the, the mayor of Wuhan, right, he, he publicly admitted you know, already five million people left China before he shut down the city. Mm -hmm. but and the reason he didn't report the case is because he has to get the approval from his uh, supervisors, I mean, from, from the central government. Yeah, right? yeah, so he doesn't have the authority to release the information to the public in a timely way. But if, it, if this happened in the United States, of course, uh, probably the municipal government, many people would need to be resigned, right, because you're yeah. causing the problem. But Chinese government say, you know, we cause a problem, but we don't talk about it. We just talk about how we can conquer the problem now, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> but on the other hand, they're, they're authoritarian uh, regime. They do have power. So mm. in that sense, are they effective in, you know, do this, all, all this effort and controlling everything? So I think they will be able to control the situation in certain ways, in certain um, scale and degrees. Uh, because, of course, you mobilize so many national resources to, to, to Wuhan, for example, right? Of course, you will sh completely slow down the uh, food traffic in the cities, you, you slow down the uh, disease transmission, you know, this, kind, this way. But what about the other problem that you already in your hands about so many, five million people in other cities, right? How do you handle this situation? So that's why their purpose is not really completely serious to deal the whole situation. They would just try to see, okay, this is a spot I can make a political show. I can show people Chinese Communist Party is so glorious. So that's why I, the first issue is their, their purpose. And then practically, they even they're so much uh, hierarch hierarchical. So practically, because the government system is hierarchical, mm -hmm. and so you will know the Chinese uh, local officials, they only need to uh, follow the order from their top. 
and they are not really uh, elected uh, officials, so they don't have the responsibility to the people, basically. Right. So, they, of course, they have to follow the leadership from the Chen, uh, central government, right? So, so you, in, in China, you see many cities start to copy, like in, in from Wuhan. Now, we are at level one response. We also try to uh, close down the traffic, all these different measures. So, it, it will show people we, we're taking uh, very active measures, but at the same time, how about all the other resources? How do you mobilize themselves? How do you support the people's life in a very comprehensive way? And to some point, they have to face the reality. Those five million people that already uh, escaped from Wuhan to other provinces. So if uh, you know, an epidemic broke out in, in other uh, provinces and stuff in, in a large scale, and if they are not, they're still trying to you know put up these political shows and stuff. At some point that will bring crisis to their, uh, to their rule also, right? What, yeah. what do you think is their real mentality, their end game? So I think the Chinese government, the central government right now, they hope this outbreak is like a SARS, eventually, eventually manageable by them. They can use... By like, itself? I mean, just disappear by itself? Mm -hmm. In certain way, it disappear by itself. In certain way, they can show they they can mobilize resources. Like in Beijing, they build up the this hospital, Xiao Tanshan, right in the building. This model showing the people that we can contain thousands of people and then eventually uh, conquer the uh, problem. So they hope uh, the problem is only like the SARS. Hmm. Uh, so that's their betting. They have some wishful thinking. They are wishful thinking, say this is a situation. Eventually, maybe a few months, I still can manage it. I still can handle it like a SARS, even though it's bigger scale, but I can use the same tactic. That's why they build a hospital in Wuhan. So it's the same model in Beijing. They hope mm -hmm. in, in maybe th three, four months, eventually I, I conquer it. And this is another proof that the Communist Party is so righteous uh, to helping people, right? Mm -hmm. So that's their bad game. But I think the situation is a lot more worse than they realized. Mm -hmm. Because uh, in Chinese government, another problem when, when it's so hierarchical, uh, because a local officer do not tell the true situation to the top, just mm -hmm. like the situation you mentioned. You know, when <laughs> Premier asks people, do you have a problem? We said no. And same. And in the city level, in, in the county level, in the village level, they don't tell the true situation to the top. For officers, you know, if you tell the true situation, you, you may be kicked out of the system. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why uh, I think it's still still very difficult uh, mm -hmm. for Chinese people to go through this very, very uh, challenging time. So keeping all of these in mind, um, what do you think the American government should do? I mean, so far five cases has been confirmed mm -hmm. in, in America. Uh, do you think the CDC's uh, precautionary measure is enough? What other steps do you think they should take? Mm. I think the CDC has been taking uh, more effective measures uh, to uh, monitor the situations. For example, they probably expand to more, city, uh, more airports uh, to do the uh, body temperature measurements. Uh, but that's not even effective, right? It will be effective in certain ways, right? At least you, are, you are enhance the measures because some people will have showing symptoms, even though some people may not have symptoms. Right. Yeah, but at least you, you're taking additional measures, uh, not just the three major cities, uh, airport, uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and New York, that's not enough. Do you think America should ban um, chi Chinese uh, flight to America, to enter America? I think uh, if more cases being uh, spread out in other countries in the United States and, and may lead to this stage that all the flights have to be postponed or cancelled. It may happen if, if the true situation in China can be revealed to the world uh, in a more timely way. So I think very critical is that the CDCs uh, need to uh, not to listen to the official number. <laughs> yeah, I think the CDC need to make a strong demand for the uh, top leaders in the U.S. Uh, President Trump, you know, uh, he, he need to put pressure in China to allow U.S. medical experts to enter China, or even global uh, ec experts on disease prevention uh, to enter China to find out the true situation and not rely on the Chinese government's data. And this is actually a fundamental way to, to protect American people and 
also is protect the people of the whole world. Because right now you can see so many countries already have confirmed cases, suspected cases. So uh, it can be an even bigger scale if the true situation is still concealed by the Chinese government. Mm -hmm. And Chinese government always try to tell the world, or portray to the world that they are uh, doing much better than what they did in SARS. But actually they already made the same mistake is concealing the information uh, from last November, December. They didn't tell people early enough about the uh, disease outbreak in Wuhan. So this is basically a, a mistake repeated in the SARS. They still conceal the information. And now when they're handling this outbreak, they still are not transparent enough. They still only tell the positive side to the world that they are taking uh, so many different measures to contain the situation. But the, the challenges, the difficulties, uh, the suffering the people are uh, experiencing right now is still not known to the world. And the risk uh, about this you know, uh, virus is still not fully exposed as well. I think the Chinese, uh, even the Chinese scientists probably have a lot of data in hands, uh, but they are not allowed it to release to the public. Uh, so that's why uh, you see uh, even some of the uh, medical uh, situation, the medical data is collected, uh, is only released on the scientific reports, even after the government uh, allowed it, uh, the situation to be uh, publicized. Mm -hmm. yeah, so some of the information definitely needs to be released earlier to the world. And right. regarding about the uh, different symptoms that people can experience from this virus and mutations, you know, it, it may occur and whether it's already in the second generation mutations happened mm -hmm. and would it be more transmissible, uh, would it be more uh, pathogenic. And this information, the Chinese doctors will have the first hands because they uh, information because they're treating so many patients every day. Right, so they will be able to see if the virus have more deadly outcomes. And so I think uh, the Chinese government need to loosen up their control, lose the control on the media, and also control on the medical situation. The Chinese government should no longer treat public health crisis as a state secret. Let's say that's a fundamental issue. If they always treat it as a state secret, that so many uh, true situation are covered up. Mm -hmm. uh, one last question. Um, under what circumstances do you think the Chinese Communist Party will lose the heaven's mandate, according to the Chinese people? I think the last uh, few years, especially un after Xi Jinping take power, the Chinese government tried to present to the Chinese people that the China is in a very glorious stage in history. Right? It's the most glorious period, even better than some of the old emperor period. The Chinese government tried to say that China is the most uh, uh, prosperous uh, moment. Right? So they try to present this image to the whole Chinese society. But I think this epidemic in China will take these image into shadows. Uh, crash. crash. Oh, yeah, I was going to say. I think this epidemic will totally crash this false image the Chinese government presents to people. People will see the incompetence, the corruptions. Uh, the Chinese government have. People will see it a lot more clearly than before and they will suffer more in this epidemic. So I think it will fundamentally uh, shake the rule of the Communist Party. So in China history, there, there are quite often uh, before the transition of, into a new dynasty, there are different disease outbreaks, you know, plague, you know, different epidemic happen in, at the end of Ming Dynasty, Qing Dynasties. So I think this could be another sign Mm -hmm. uh, another situation, the history, the history repeats itself. A so, dynasty ending pandemic. Yes, it could looming. be the dynasty ending pandemic. Yeah, that's why it, if I say seriously, yeah, it is, uh, it's a red dynasty ending epidemic already happening in front of Chinese people's face, but people may not realize it. Thank you very much, Dr. Lin. My pleasure, thank you.